Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusker here for another edition of the show. So um, this edition, we got three wines, so no educational segment today. Um, got three wines here and this is based upon, well, honestly, these the, the people I bought this from is not the, not the winery. Uh, it's called Weinster, W-I, or Winster. Um, I don't think it was, is it? Yeah, Weinster, W-I-N-E-S-T-Y-R. I'll have a link below to that. Go to the website for the link. Um, and uh, they had contacted me about about the stuff, and I think this is the one that wants to or wanted to. They haven't contacted me again about it, having some type of discount code or whatever. So um, I got to contact them again and say, hey, I finally reviewed the wines. I didn't tell them I was going to review. I didn't even tell them I was going to buy any wine. I just say, hey, I'd be interested. And then that's what seems to happen a lot with emails. People send you an email about something. Hey, we'd like to have our wine on there. You go, great. Here's where you send it to. Or, cool, this is, this is what I need. Uh, or, hey, we liked it. Okay, this is what I need. And then it just, pfft. granted, there are sometimes I'd take a week or two or three to respond to somebody. Um, since this isn't my job, um, I don't rely on it. I don't make a living at this. However, hit that donate button. I, I got it early this time. I forgot last session, last episode. Hit that donate button. Make a New Year's resolution still in February to uh, donate. Five bucks, five bucks a month. Anyway, um, or more if you want. But uh, anyway, so I thought I'd check it out because if I was going to use them as an advertiser, I'd like to know how they worked and if they were reliable and what kind of wines they had. So um, it was good they hadn't contacted me yet because I hadn't done the wines. So I would at least be able to kind of talk about this particular winery and um, what they do. So um, let's, um, so let's, let's talk about the service real quick first, just, just, to, just to talk about that. And I forgot to start the timer on there. Um, they're a company that they look, they look for, I wouldn't say boutique wineries, but they look for wineries that may not have wide distribution, uh, that have good value, good wines for, for a good value. And, uh, you pay $10 in shipping, um, unless you buy at least a hundred dollars worth of wine. Now I think, and then the shipping is like one cent. Now I think the way it breaks down, if you buy a hundred dollars of wine from one winery, 200 from two, or no, I think 150 from two and 200 from three wineries. Um, your, your shipping is um, one cent instead of $10. Uh, they have 36 wineries right now on their list. And I, I think it's been 36 since I first found them uh, or they contacted me. Uh, almost all of them are California. There's three that are in Washington. One's in Oregon and one's in Argentina. And actually, one is a Washington uh, of the three Washington. One of them is the is a Washington slash Argentina one. I think it's called Hand of God or Hands of God. Uh, I tell you, honestly, as far as the, the, as far as the wineries, none of them rung a bell, um, which is fine. You get a lot of small wineries out there that don't get a lot of distribution. The only, the only sales they make really are from their winery or from a, or from a, uh, a wine club or a mailing list. So um, it's good exposure for these wineries. And, you know, the shipping is directly from the winery, but they're, these, this company basically brokers the sale for them. Uh, so let's talk about the winery. Uh, it's Hanson Cellars. Now it's the Hanson Garbarino Vineyards is the whole, is the name of the company. Uh, they're in Lodi. Um, there isn't a whole heck of a lot about this, this brand, um, to be honest. And they have, uh, it does say on the website and somewhere else on the website, uh, 150 years of history, though there really isn't much history to talk about other than there's a blog post from sometime in 2013, they don't have a lot of blog posts on their blog, uh, but they're all from, I think, 2013 or 2012, uh, from Rafael Gabarino. And I'm, I'm assuming Rafael, because how it's spelt, might be a woman. I'm not sure. Um, but saying her great-great-grandfather emigrated from Italy to the United States in 1908. And that 
the, that tradition holds true with her about Italian winemaking and the passion, and that's it. There's nothing else, nothing saying that her father was the person that started the winery or that he was a winemaker somewhere or he even did any winemaking at all at home. So I don't really know too much about it. Uh, they have a few other brands under the under their under their umbrella on the website, Black Bear Red Chair, uh, Black Bear Red Chair. I mean that's the name. Uh, Mustache Vineyards, Rock Lobster Vineyards, Sacramento Trail, and Hot Dog Vineyards. So, again, wine vineyards or wine companies I've not really heard of, um, but I figured I'd try this. Uh, and there's apparently it's a Hanson Wines in Paso Robles. Just so you know, when I did my internet searching for the place. Um, so don't confuse it with that one. These are two different places. These are these guys are from Lodi. So we have three wines. They're all 2011. Um, they all sell about for about $15 on the website on on this website, the Hanson website. Um, I bought the I bought this for $44 total. Um, wait a minute. Yeah, $44 total, $21 discount. Oh, wait a minute. I paid $35.75. That's a forty-four dollar total um, for all three. Normally, minus twenty-one dollars is the discount, uh, and then you add in the tax and the shipping for ten dollars, and it came out to thirty-five seventy-five. So I paid thirty-five seventy-five for three bottles of wine. I was like, I wrote, I put my notes down very confusingly. All right, so let's do a little rinsey rinse here. Sorry, Gary, didn't mean to steal your thunder. I don't know if I remember to put a rim shot in there somewhere. All right. So Pinot Noir. We, we're going kind of in the order of what should be lightest to fullest bodied. Uh, Pinot Noir. Um, let's see. You know, maybe if I read the back of this. Uh, California Heritage, a family is part of California our culture. See, you know, it would be great if... Uh, this is on the website. So they've been part of agriculture for 140 years, spanning six generations. So my guess is that they've been a grower for a long time, and they decided to make some make some wines at some point in time. All right, um, but there really isn't anything much about the wine itself. I'm going to guess. Oh yeah, and as far as the the um, notes about each of the wines on the website, there wasn't much really. The cab had like nothing on it. The Merlot and the Pinot had a few bits of information and just mentioned barrel aging, but that's it. doesn't even say how long or what kind of barrels. So pretty basic information. Nothing wrong with that. Just in the age of information, when there isn't that much information, I kind of wonder why. All right, so pretty typical Pinot Noir, very see-through. So I'm going to think it's 100% Pinot Noir. I don't think they added any Syrah to the wine to darken it and beef, up, beef it up as has been done in many Cali Pinots. Um, not a fruit forward Pinot Noir. I want to say it was kind of, not dusty, but almost like a linen. Like a, like a, like a, not a tablecloth, but like a linen type of feeling to it. Not, not necessarily an aroma, okay? But not in a bad way, not like a bleach or, or detergent smell, but just kind of that. It, it, the first thing that hit me was kind of this, this this clean laundry type of smell to it. But it was really fleeting, so that that was that's that's already gone. Really, as far as anything else, I get kind of nothing. I just kind of you, it just smells like alcohol. I don't really get any, I really don't get any fruit. And I don't mean like, see, this problem is, I say it smells like alcohol. It smells like alcohol, grape juice, not like it smells like the grape, but you, you can tell there's alcohol in it. There's, there's a slight, a very, very, very slight burn to your nose. That's it. It's not like this, like I, I, like I stuck my nose in a glass of whiskey or anything like that. But I really don't get anything else. At least there's a palette to it. Um, 
honestly, my first impression was this kind of grapey. Now, not grapey like sweet Texas red wines or sweet New Jersey red wines or, or Concord wines, <laughs> Concord grape wines. Um, not in that sense. Maybe a bit of cherry to it, kind of cherry juice. Um, yeah, kind of a cherry juice type of flavor to it. Not a lot, it's not really sweet, sweet, but you know, kind of, <clears throat> kind of like you, you had a little bit of grenadine, which honestly, grenadine is not cherry juice. Grenadine is pomegranate, because grenadine is the French word for grenade, which is the French word or French word for pomegranate, because pomegranates look like grenades. Anyway, so there's your little bit of trivia about grenadine in, Fran in French language. So wow your friends when they say, oh, grenadine's cherry. You know, it's pomegranate, brother. Um, but it's kind of like that cherry, but it's, it really tastes like cherry juice. Um, I get a bit of fleshiness out of it. Low tannins. Um, Acidity is probably medium, medium plus because my mouth is watering. But it's really light. I mean, it's okay. I probably wouldn't rush out and buy it again. And I, ha I hate saying that. I hate saying I wouldn't necessarily rush out and buy it. I mean, I always hate basically dissing someone's wine because this is their livelihood. You know, I can step away from this and, and do my restaurant manager job and it's not going to be a big deal. You could, someone could sit there and say that I'm an idiot and I don't know anything about wine. I'd be like... Okay, see you later. Um, and it's not going to hurt me. Um, and I'm not saying it's a bad wine. It's not bad. It's not poorly made. It's not out of balance. Um, it's just not to my liking. And, you know, it, Pinot Noir is a grape that I have struggled with or a wine that I've struggled with. Um, I have found some Pinot Noirs I really like. So it's not, it's not like I haven't found anything I like on Pinot Noir. But this is just not... A style like. I mean, I tend to like the earthier. I tend to like the old world or Oregon style wines. Um, excuse me. I have had some California Pinot Noirs that were really good. That were also, they weren't this new worldy type of Cali, typical California Pinot Noirs. Now, like I said, on the plus side, this looks like it's 100% Pinot Noir. So they're not trying to beef it up with anything else, you know, just based upon the color and how uh, transparent it is. All right, so now in the aroma, see now, see, it's got to pour it again. On the, on the nose, I got a little, I don't want to say funk, but I got a little earthiness out of it. Yeah, so I got a little earth out of it, so maybe just needed to kind of blow off whatever in the glass. So let's give it a second shot here. And trust me, this happens to wines all the time. You've seen it on my show. On the palate, I mean, there's still cherry there. It doesn't taste doesn't taste as much like cherry juice anymore. So there's a little bit more earthiness to it. But is it a fifteen dollar bottle of wine? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, it's it's about where it should be on the price point, at least as far as what the uh, website has, what their website has. So I mean, it's 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 priced about where it should be. Um, it's not a bad wine. Uh, it's not my preference. I wouldn't personally get it again, so I wouldn't necessarily make it a recommend, but. If, if that's the style of Pinot Noir you like, then go ahead and get it. All right, let's get to wine number two. All right, just diving right into it. So we already know everything about the, the winery. You don't have to really talk about it. This is the 2011, right? I said it all through 11, 2011. Uh, 2011 Merlot from Hanson Cellars. And they have the same thing in the back, except they're going to talk about the Merlot. Typically, I don't read tasting notes anyway because I don't want to be too influenced by what some, the winemaker or the marketing person for the winery or marketing company that 
has a contract with the winery tells me it was in the wine. I'd rather figure it out myself. By anyway, Merlot, so uh, a wine that I, I'm sorry, grape I actually do love. Um, very nice. I like it a lot. And hopefully it's continuing its um, rise in popularity. All right, so on the nose, again, we'll Israelify the nose here. Honestly, there's a bit of earthiness to it. I won't even say it almost like, it's weird, but it's something like, it's like a, sorry, can't talk. Almost like a strawberry to it. Now I'm kind of, no pun intended, grasping at straws on a fruit, but um, that really was the first thing that came to mind was the strawberry. So we'll go with bright red fruit. How about that? Other than that, A bit of spice to it, uh, like a pepper, like a black pepper, a white pepper thing, which, okay. I don't normally say those words with Merlot, but it's okay. We got it. Not much else. I don't get any vanilla or oakiness out of it. So um, just a real muted nose. Did I start the timer? I don't remember if I did or not. Do to do. No, I didn't. That's okay. You probably won't even hear the the tone go off as I'm done with this. Hmm. I like this wine. Now, this wine, it's got a bunch of stuff going on. Okay, I don't want to make it sound like there's, there's like hundreds of things, but got it. I'm getting kind of a, a lot of good things out of this. There's a juiciness out of it. It's almost like a, there's also kind of a, a pyrazine, which again, you can get it at Merlot. I just don't typically associate it with Merlot, but um, I, get, I kind of get that pepper. I kind of get that that brighter red fruits. It's still kind of almost a strawberry again. Um, I get a flushiness, like so. I get fuzzy tannins. That's really what I kind of need to describe it as, because uh, it's it's like the it's like you know the outside of a peach. That fuzziness that you get from the skin. Um, something you get a peach flavor out of it, but um, so kind of fuzzy tannins. And there's a juiciness out of it. I mean, good acid. My mouth's watering pretty good. Um, is it a spectacular wine? I wouldn't say so, but it's definitely, I think, worth 15 bucks, especially worth the amount of money you're going you're gonna to pay for it from the Weinster uh, website. Um, you know, if you found this out there for $15 or around that price point, I would totally recommend it. Um, it's a nice wine. I think it's well made. I think it's it's got a good, it's got a nice amount of things happening to it with with the flavor profile. Um, it's not not too um, earthy. It's not really really fruit forward. Um, you would probably somebody would probably call it a dry wine, and um, yeah, I mean this is a wine though I could totally just drink on its own. I wouldn't necessarily need to put any food with it, but I would put, it's a lighter wine for sure. It is not heavy, it's, it's, it's heavier than the Pinot. So I'm, I'm guessing I'm going in the right direction here for body. Um, you know, I know, I mean, you could have it with some cheeses, like a meat, like a, you know, a meat plate or a cheese plate. Um, you could have it with that type of thing, like salamis and stuff like that. Some cheeses, hard cheeses, you know, all that good stuff. I can see doing that, um, or just pair with just about everything else, but, um, you know, it's a decent wine. I like it. Like I said, if you found this somewhere and you wanted something that was nice and it's going to be around that $15 price point, which it should be, 
I'd say, yeah, get it. Check it out. It is not bad. Let's put it that way. All right. Ooh, got to stop the timer. So let's move on to wine number three. All right, just hopping right into the third wine here. This episode actually might be under 30 minutes for once. We'll see. We'll see how fast we can do this wine. All right, so this is a 2011 Cabernet Sauvignon, again from Hanson Cellars. Should be around $15 on their website, if I remember correctly. All right, let's check it out here. Definitely a more of a pepper aroma to it. So, I mean, the aromas, you know, the, each each bouquet or each, each nose um, definitely has more to it as we're moving up the scale, I guess you could say. Really just a generic red fruit on, on the on the nose, nothing spectacular. Now on the palate. I get, it feels like a heftier version of the Merlot. I'm going to assume that each of these wines is 100% what they say they are. Um, they have to be a certain percentage of that grape to call it that, but you might have a, for some, some cab in here, you might have some Merlot in here, but um, I'm, gonna, I'm probably gonna say that they're not doing that. They could though, but it really feels like, a, it tastes like a, a heftier version of the Merlot. It has about the same type of flavors to it. I wouldn't say maybe strawberry, maybe maybe more of a raspberry, but If these wines have oak treatment, they're not overly oaked, that's for sure. Um, I don't get a lot of other flavors to it. I mean, it's, it's I wouldn't say it's super light, but it's kind of light, you know, for a cab. It doesn't really, I wouldn't pick it as a cab. Let's put it that way, if I had to blind taste this. Um, I might just add a guessing by purity, but I probably would guess Merlot. Um, cause it does seem kind of light. Um, it's not a bad wine, but I just don't get anything that just tells me this is cab and I'm not asking for Napa Valley cab. Remember this is from Lodi. They, they have, they're going to have, and I can't tell you what a Lodi cab is supposed to taste like, but it doesn't, but I've had cab from all over and it, I just don't get those Cabernet flavors. Um, and I'm saying it's not a bad wine, but it definitely feels like it's a table wine. It's a, it's a wine that, you know, honestly, this is the Merlot is the only one that I feel that you could sit there and say it's $15 and you're getting $15 worth of wine. Um, this one, uh, uh, 10 bucks, maybe, maybe, um, you know, it, it really kind of tastes like a generic wine. So let's just try a little more. Okay. Let's give it a shot here. Maybe, maybe I'm just being, a jerk and I mean, I'm being an idiot and I've, I'm sorry if the people at Hanson are watching this and throwing stuff at the computer or the TV, but I almost got a caramel aspect out of it, but that was really fleeting. Yeah, it's just, 
Again, it's not a poorly made wine, but it's just a wine that I'm not a fan of. Um, it's not to my liking. It's not what I expect out of a cab. It's, it's pretty, I hate to say it, but generic. It's, I don't get anything out of it. I mean, I honestly, and I, it could be like any other label of $10 or less uh, cab that you find at a grocery store. It's my opinion. It's my opinion. It's, somebody else may have an opinion that it's it's a much better wine. Um, it's just that that's how I think about the wine, and I don't like again. I don't like dissing wines. You know, the, I, I wouldn't recommend buying that wine. The Merlot, I, I'd recommend. The Pinot Noir, eh, I'd, I'd say if you like Pinot Noir like that, then then try it. But you know, I'm not really a I'm not really a fan of this cab. Pinot Noir, not so much. I mean, the Merlot is the most interesting to me. I don't even think it really drinks like a Merlot. So I think it drinks more like, make sure this is Merlot, right? It kind of drinks more like a cab than anything else, but. I don't know. I think the Pinot Noir actually has improved over this period of time, but. Again, it's not, the Pinot Noir also tastes like kind of a generic $10 run of the mill, just like everybody else, California, Pinot Noir. So, and it's not the Pinot Noir I kind of, it's not the Pinot Noir I like. This is the, tastes like the Pinot Noir I've had that the first time I, ever, I remember having Pinot Noir I didn't like. So, of the three, the Merlot is the one I would recommend. The other two, Try it if you like it. If it's the style, especially the Pinot Noir, that if you like a really light Pinot Noir, that's, you know, to me just like anything else. Um, but 15 bucks each, um, I think it's a little pricey. But what do I know? I'm not a winemaker. I don't know the 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 business end of that, and that might be what they have to charge for this. So, who knows? Who knows? I know that outside of the big four, when you start getting into the other 46 states, and the wines that you buy from them, there tend to be five, ten, fifteen dollars more bottle than the equivalent quality from the other four, from the big four. All right, so that's going to wrap it up for this episode. Um, as always, I just want to appreciate uh, everyone watching it. Um, again, stay tuned for uh, episode 300 that will be coming up uh, shortly. This is, what, 290, right? So 10 episodes. Um, I'll have more details uh, soon, but uh, uh once I finalize everything, I'll kind of reveal exactly what's going on. But I think I've talked about enough how I want to have a live audience and live stream. So it looks like that's going to happen. I just got to get the venue to commit to a date and we commit the actual, put everything on paper as far as what we're going to do for that particular night. Um, but it's looking like we're going to do it. And um, let's see what else. That's it. Hit the donate button. Uh, Donate whatever you can. The $5 a month subscription is perfect. Uh, or you donate more in a one-time deal. And uh, friend me up. Friend me up above. Click the links below for information about the wines. And uh, we'll see everyone again next time. Mm -hmm.